So I've had a ton of people ask me to talk about this, the uh, SpaceX Zuma mission and what happened to it. And I put off talking about it because for one thing, we didn't really know yet. There weren't really any answers. And number two, I don't really cover the news, but I have been thinking about adding a series to the channel where I share, you know, articles and news stories and scientific advancements that I run across in my research and, and on interneting throughout the week. So this might be a good opportunity to start something like that. So without any further ado, Let's talk about Zuma. Okay, so for those who don't know, Zuma was the code name of a secret payload that uh, SpaceX launched for the United States government, thought to be the military, on January 8th. Now, it was already uh, shrouded in mystery. It's a secret government satellite. So SpaceX wasn't able to show the entire launch the way they normally do. If you don't watch SpaceX, they make a big show of their launches with video cameras everywhere showing the deployment of the satellite all the way to the first stage landing. It's, it's a whole thing. But on this one, they had to cut out at a certain point because they weren't allowed to show the satellite. Now, from all indications, the launch was a success. Everything looked fine. And then the next day we woke up to news that possibly the Zuma satellite had been lost. So what normally happens is the Falcon 9 launches, it gets up to escape velocity, and then the first and second stage detach. The first stage then lands to great applause, and then the second stage continues until it gets the satellite to the correct orbital height and propels it to orbital velocity. Once there, the fairings come off, revealing the satellite. The satellite decouples from the second stage, and then once disconnected, the second stage deorbits, usually somewhere over the Indian Ocean. There's probably more space stuff at the bottom of the ocean than there is in space. But what seems to have happened with Zuma is that for some reason the decoupler didn't work, and the second stage thought the satellite was free and deorbited with the satellite attached, burning it up in the atmosphere. So then the question became, whose fault is that? I mean, this is a billion dollar satellite, somebody's gonna have to take the blame, and in the beginning, in the first few days following this, it was being pointed at SpaceX. The first newspaper articles, especially in the Wall Street Journal, were calling it a SpaceX failure. And of course, in the video that I posted about the Falcon Heavy, just the day before that, I talked about how SpaceX has learned to kind of embrace failure and learn from it and uh, grow through that, so I got some feedback on that. But a day or so later, SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell responded by saying this, For clarity, after a review of all data to date, Falcon 9 did everything correctly on Sunday night. If we or others find otherwise based on further review, we will report it immediately. Information published that is contrary to this statement is categorically false. So then attention turned to the manufacturer of the satellite, which is Northrop Grumman, and it turns out that they not only made the satellite, but they made the payload adapter that connected it to the Stage 2. So now some people are pointing the, the, the blame at them. But then Northrop Grumman snapped back saying that SpaceX may have attached the adapter wrong, so who knows. Adding further to the frustration, um, the Defense Department is refusing to speak about it. And at a press conference, uh, Press Secretary Dana White literally just punted it back to SpaceX and said that the reporters just need to talk to them. SpaceX launched the Zuma, a classified satellite payload. Does the Pentagon consider the mission a success or a failure? both Dana in general, given its classified payload? I would have to refer you to SpaceX who, 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 who uh, conducted the launch. Mm -hmm. Again, I would have to refer you to them, and, and that, that's, that's the answer. But it's not general. a SpaceX satellite. I, I'm, I'm we're not going to be able to give you any more information. So, why, why, Can you give us a sense of whether you consider it a failure or a success as a mission? Again, I'd have to tell you. To, you'd have to, I'd have to refer you to SpaceX, which actually launched the satellite. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, ma'am. I'm sorry. I understand, um, and, and given the classified nature of all of this, but again, that's, that's, that's the answer. So nobody's taking responsibility for this, is what it comes down to. So, so let's go through the options. Okay, so the second stage got the signal that the satellite had decoupled, which is why it went ahead and deorbited, but apparently it had not actually decoupled. So this could mean one or both of two things. One, a communications error, and two, a physical error. If it's a communications error, it could be either party's fault. You know, it could be that the payload adapter sent a faulty communication to SpaceX in their second stage, or it could be that the SpaceX second stage misread the communication from the payload adapter. If it's a physical error, it could just be that something got stuck. Now, I'm not gonna go down the whole rabbit hole of figuring out exactly how the decoupler works and get into the mechanics of the whole thing and the engineering, but we can assume that there was something that clamped onto something else 
that kept it in place that was supposed to let go and it could have been that something got stuck or got broken and for that reason it didn't fully detach the way it was supposed to. Or maybe on launch a piece of wire or something from the satellite or from the fairing fell down to the bottom where the decoupler was and then when the fairings split up it might have wrapped around something in a certain way, it'd be a whole freak thing, but it might have held it just enough to where the decoupler worked just fine, but it was still attached by this wire to the second stage. So when the second stage deorbited, it took the satellite down with it. In that case, the decoupler and the communication would have worked perfectly, but because of that freak occurrence, it still, the result was the same. Far-fetched, maybe, but it's a possibility. Then of course you'd have to figure out whose fault it was that something broke off. Was it a part of the satellite that broke off? Then that would be Northrop Grumman's fault. Is it a part of the fairing, the inside of the fairing, something that came off? That would be SpaceX's fault. But we'll never know because there weren't any cameras on it. So the whole thing is kind of moot, really. Now this is of course the official story, or <laughs> as official as a story can be when nobody is willing to talk about it. But there's reasons to believe that the official story isn't true. Maybe Zuma is up there doing just fine, but all this was put on to distract people because it's a spy satellite. I mean, people won't be looking for your satellite if they don't think it's up there. Maybe they felt like it got too much attention when SpaceX launched it, so they had to cover it up. Maybe it's a super advanced uh, satellite that they just wanted to make sure nobody looked for. Maybe it broke some kind of international treaties or something. Maybe it was some kind of weapon. All I can say is that if they did that to keep people from looking for it, they failed spectacularly. There are reports popping up online of amateur astronomers that claim to have, you know, done the math and found the trajectory and, and seen Zuma in their telescope. Although there's a ton of stuff in space, so it could very easily have been something else. So I'll link to some videos down below that go into what Zuma might have been, what it might have been capable of, and why this whole thing might have been faked. But I will warn you to not get too swept up in conspiracy theories because this is 99% speculation it's really easy to start connecting a lot of dots and seeing things that you want to see. As for where I stand personally, I mean, this is just my opinion, man, but um, yeah, I, I think it probably was some kind of fluke mechanical thing like I was talking about earlier, just because, I mean, the government puts up secret spy satellites and top secret payloads all the time, and they don't do this for any of the others, so why would they do it for this one? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, they've even launched secret satellites with SpaceX before, so why do it with this one? I mean, was this satellite that important? Is the Department of Defense trying to work out some kind of sweetheart deal with a competitor like ULA so they fake some kind of disaster with SpaceX to give some kind of reason to not work with them anymore? I mean, it just brings up all kinds of crazy questions. So the simplest answer is something mechanical to me. But having said that, I mean, this is, this is a spy satellite. <laughs> it was pretty much made for shenanigans. I'll update on this as it develops, but uh, let me know what you think in the comments and not just about Zuma, but about this. New segments on Answers with Joe. Get your name. And if you're new here, I typically do videos on Monday on science and technology related subjects and now uh, random topics on Thursday and maybe new stuff on Wednesday. We'll see. But if you like this kind of stuff, you can check out some of my other videos and uh, please subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. All right, that's enough for now. Thanks you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and share, and I will catch you next time. Love you guys. Take care.